Hey everyone, this is Joe. I've discovered some very interesting videos showing engineering simulations of the failure of the OceanGate Titanic sub. There's a PhD from a German university, Dr. Ronald Wagner, and he has produced these engineering simulations of, uh, that show three possible failures that could have caused the implosion of the OceanGate Titan sub. I'll post a video link so that everyone can uh, take a peek at these videos. Sorry, this image is a little blurry. I had to do a screen capture from his video. This is about halfway through the video, and he's talking about th three potential failures. One is uh, because the acrylic window was only rated for 1,300 meters, he says one possible failure is the fracturing of the acrylic window. And he does show a simulation you want to uh, check out because it's really interesting. The other possible failure is the fracture of the composite cylinder. Uh, he refers to this as a fiber fracture. The third possible failure, he indicates, is the titanium to composite cylinder interface, which would be your adhesive uh, being bonded between titanium flanges and the carbon fiber cylinder. Now we mentioned about these as in our earlier videos as all potential theories could have caused the, the Titan sub to fail. So it's, uh, it's good to see a professional who has made the, the same three assumptions. Here's another screenshot of the actual simulation showing uh, the final implosion of uh, the carbon fiber. You want to go ahead and watch this entire video. Uh, it is really interesting. It shows some very explosive or implosive images here or uh, animation of this uh, of the actual uh, pressure vessel imploding. So another point that Dr. Wagner made in the video was that at the time of the design of Ocean Gate's uh, carbon fiber pressure vessel, the design appears to be strong enough to be able to withstand the depth of diving at the depths of the Titanic. The question we have to ask ourselves then is what about the repeated stress and strain on the carbon fiber cylinder as well as we have to question what methods of manufacturing were used. Uh, as I mentioned in my first video, if carbon fiber if the carbon fiber plies are not laminated properly and with an enough compressive strength, you will get weaknesses in between the plies, uh, which are often referred to as voids or delaminations. If we say that the Titan sub made 13 to 15 dives and failed right after that, then we have to question if the pressure vessel was designed properly, what caused it to fail after uh, those repetitive dives? Could it have been also a manufacturing issue? Because some people did report in the media of hearing on previous dives a lot of banging and popping, which could very well mean that the carbon fiber plies were delaminating and the resin was cracking in between the plies. So that to me points out some manufacturing issues with the plies of carbon fiber. Just because a design is considered, considered to be proper, the actual manufacturing process, if it's not done properly, could weaken the structure uh, tremendously. And that appears to be what possibly could have happened Another interesting thing that Dr. Wagner indicated was that in looking at the titanium rings and the way they were uh, glued together with the adhesive, he made the comment, he said, I would never dive in that sub. So the question we have to ask, can you safely design and build a submersible using carbon fiber? And that answer is yes. There's a company in Rhode Island that successfully builds carbon fiber pressure vessels. Name of the company is Composite Energy Technologies, CET for short. 
They provide carbon fiber pressure vessels to commercial and government customers such as the Office of Naval Research that have never failed in their dives to much deeper sites than Titanic. CET designs and builds mostly UUVs, unmanned underwater vehicles. I have an article here. I'll put uh, a link in the description and uh, this article discusses uh, composite energy technologies, what they do, and how they build and test their, their pressure vessels out of carbon fiber. This article makes reference to several direct quotes from the company's CEO. The CEO points to the record of his company's products in deep sea applications. It says, quotes, we've built vessels that we've cycled 200 times to deep sea pressures and then brought them to implosion, and those fail at the same depth as the new ones. The key is diligence in designing and testing the composite structures, we have a very high confidence in the strength of what's been built, he said. We use engineering models, but we test the failure to validate what's been modeled. That's a crucial step that OceanGate skipped. They never brought an exact clone to failure. The company also has real-world results to back up these tests. There are also examples of carbon fiber UUVs with over 6,000 operational hours at over 6,000 meters. That is the real world environment after many cycles. As a result, CET delivers carbon fiber submersibles that reliably work at deep depths. I feel very comfortable with what we do, but it has taken a lot of testing to build up that confidence. CET tests each one of their designs to failure. CET stated, OceanGate never brought an exact clone to failure. Here's an example you see on screen here of a carbon fiber pressure vessel. Look how thick that is. And look at the nice finish of the outside diameter. Very smooth. If we scroll down, again, they take every single design and then they build, build that uh, pressure vessel up, and then they test it to failure. Here you see an image of, uh, again, a pressure vessel that was tested to implosion. The article also goes on to express that the CEO stated that uh, in addition to their testing to failure, they also perform thermal imaging and ultrasonic scans on every part to verify that it has been manufactured properly. Then the company provides the details of those scans to its customers so that they can perform the same checks at regular intervals in the vehicle's life to test for evidence of the cycling fatigue that worries Cameron. That's, that would be referring to James Cameron. It can be tested against the baseline when it left the factory, says the CEO. So far, they haven't found any changes over time. So here it appears that we have a company that is doing things the right way. They design and model all of their uh, designs, engineering simulation software. They perform regular testing. They test a failure. Uh, they do uh, image analysis and ultrasonic testing. Uh, they keep track of all their data. They publish their data to their customers. I've reached out to CET in an email asking them to give me some additional information on the processes that they use to manufacture the pressure vessels and the end caps, uh, but they have declined to answer my emails at this time. So I'm assuming that a lot of their procedures are proprietary and they don't want to share that. That the CEO mentioned about uh, his concerns on OceanGate using titanium and carbon fiber and the repeated uh, stress and strain and the different uh, thermal expansion and difference in elastic properties of titanium and carbon uh, would be uh, something that he would be very cautious about and has tried to communicate this information to Stockton Rush in the past so looking at this information that I just presented, 
it, it appears that it is very safe to use carbon fiber in pressure vessels as long as it is manufactured and tested on a regular basis and to maintain a rigorous schedule of this testing and documenting uh, of the uh, pressure vessels that they manufacture. Another interesting fact that the uh, CEO of uh, CET mentioned is that with the proper design, even though there are limitations of carbon fiber uh, under compressive strain, that there are ways to design around this limitation of carbon fiber to make sure that the pressure vessels can safely support those tremendous loads in a compressive fashion. So I hope you enjoyed this interesting information. Go ahead and take a look at the videos of the simulation. I'll put a link in on this article on the page. So go ahead and take a look at this article. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.